thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Wagon Wednesday, where we talk to you guys about animal behavior, pet training tips, stuff like that. We have Miriam joining us this week. Um, and so this week we're going to be talking about trigger stacking, um, which kind of goes off on what we talked about last week with uh, body language and uh, learning how to read your pet's body language because it's super important uh, to recognize some of those signs so that we're not putting our pets into some unnecessary stress. So Miriam, can you talk to us a little bit about trigger stacking? Trigger stacking is uh, every dog reacts to a certain trigger. Um, for us, a trigger might be seeing a spider. It freaks us out or um, something that stimulates us. And uh, like um, we're high on adrenaline because we just worked out and we add those events and uh, if the, then we get a reaction that might be negative and um, the dog would snap or turn around and bark or um, have, have these uh, bite in, in the worst case scenario. And uh, these happen on a regular day, regular basis. And um, we're gonna explain these later uh, by the use of water cups. This is going to be representing your dog. Uh, this would be a regular dog that is empty, and then uh, uh, we're going to show you a dog with pre existing conditions and a dog that is from a shelter. And um, kind of try to relate to you what happens in the world out and in the dog's view. So, trigger stacking can be you can trigger stack any dog, Not, any it just dog, doesn't. Yes mean you know a shelter dog that might have been through like a rough pass it can be even your own happy friendly dog at home a stray too. that you found or any any a puppy fresh from uh, the mother i mean it, it you know that that stress to be separated from litters and from uh, from the siblings i mean and from the mother so um, any stressor um, um, that we uh, add on the dog that's why we discontinued uh, standardized behavior tests because um, if we just long enough poke the dog and pull on its hair and do all these things eventually everybody's going to have enough even a dog and that's why studies have proven that these tests are outdated and not valid and as accurate as a coin flip and that's a quote from a behaviorist so can you show us a little bit about uh, what trigger stacking looks like in you know shelter dogs and regular dogs with these cups yes so this is your regular dog. Your regular dog is empty, and now uh, we're going to have a bicycle drive by on a walk. Now the dog is pulling on the leash. We're gonna do some leash correction. What's leash correction? Pop on the leash to stop the dog from pulling. We're gonna see some dogs behind the fences, and then after we walk around the corner, we meet a stranger. Now, right after we get home, here's some kids visiting. And here we go. The dog might overreact, might snap at the kids, might, this is how much it would take for a regular dog. Right? Now we're gonna take a nap and we're empty again. Now we're gonna start with a dog that has some pre-existing conditions like separation anxiety. We're gonna start right here. And now we're gonna be on a walk. We're gonna do some leash correction. And we have some dogs bite, barking around behind the fence. And now a bicycle comes by. And now we're gonna do a leash correction again. And the dog turns around and snaps at us. So we wonder why that is. The dog is gonna go home and take a nap in an awesome crate again. And now we have a shelter dog. And the shelter dog should go home. This is how you get a shelter dog. And uh, that's why we stress the decompression because with the shelter dog, they are already full. There's dogs barking. There's, uh, they're in a cage, they can't go potty, they don't, they can't run freely. And now we're gonna meet a stranger at PetSmart. And now we're gonna give it some leash correction. And now we're gonna meet some other dogs. 
And now a bicycle goes by. And here comes the visitors. Dogs need to decompress. Um, and uh, I hope that explains trigger stacking to you guys. Um, we need to give dogs time <laughs> to decompress. And the way we do this, naps, shoe bones, positive reinforcement, playtime in the park, cuddling, and then we can start over. So Miriam, you just showed us how uh, trigger stacking can happen with any kind of dog, even your own dog at home, but also a shelter pet too. What are some ways that you can uh, notice some signals in your dog that they're being trigger stacked? Uh, let's say um, you're having uh, a walk with your dog and uh, the dog all of a sudden starts yelling at others. And I call it yelling because it's, it's a certain type of bark that where they just went vent at the other dogs walking by, or they freeze, they're back into the leash, they want to go away. Um, people want to say, hi, puppy. And uh, the dog's like, you know, oh, I don't want that. So we, we have to listen to that, to their communication. The only communication that will immediately get our attention and we're like, oh, how dare you, is if the dog shows teeth, is growling, or even snapping at us. And usually with, uh, most people, when I had a one-on-one -on -one talk with them, and they confessed to me that the first thing they do is like, don't do that. So now the dog has been trying to community, uh, communicate with uh, more subtle signals like, I don't like this, ducking down, licking their chops, cowering, walking away, but we're not listening to that. So when the dog finally is like, okay, I had enough, and now I'm gonna show my teeth, and then it gets punished. So next time, um, when it's going through the same thing, the dog already learned that the communication is not listened to, so it might just result in a fight. So listening to your pet's body language is super important, right? Because they're just trying to communicate to you, and if we're not listening, then, I mean, it can lead to bites. Even the nicest dogs can bite if they're put in the wrong situation. Yes, right? and uh, you might think you're not a strong enough leader, and you can not dominate your dog's communication and behavior, you might be able to. But the little girl that walks home from school when the dog's frustrated and your dog jumps over the fence will not be able to. You might be able to suppress behavior by punishment or controlling the dog, but the little kid that comes over and it's like in the next room trying to pet your dog might not so, be so lucky and then in the end we blame the dogs when in all reality, it's our fault for not supervising, managing, and listening to the dog's body language. Well, thank you so much, Miriam, for talking to us about trigger stacking. Next week, uh, we're actually going to be talking on, you want to explain it a little bit? Or? Yes. Um, so next week, we're going to uh, set up a scenario. We're going to have a little video, and it's going to be <laughs> what if we treated people the way we treat dogs. And since learning theory is the same for uh people and for all other mammals and even, uh, I mean, you can even train a pup official learning theory. So um, we're going to try to give you scenarios that explain better what dogs go through, uh, but just with the people version. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Miriam, for joining us today. And I will see you guys next week for uh, next week's episode of Wagon Wednesday, where we talk to you guys about pet training and animal behavior. So if you guys have any personal questions uh, with your own personal pets or stuff like that, please let us know in the comments below and we'll definitely cover it in a future episode. Until then, we'll see you guys.